In today's video, we're going to explore the scroll effects using the Divi Builder for WordPress. So uh, the way it works is we simply have a page, and if you follow me down the page here, this is just a test site I've got, you'll notice I have an element here on the left. I've got two elements down the bottom here and one missing on the left. Because as I scroll, it appears from the bottom and passes through to the top. This is a scroll effect. As I get up, I can stop at any position and it will find whatever position it needs to be on a page. And that is one of the scroll effects, just to show you what I'm talking about. So the way it works is quite simple. I go to any module or element on my page and I can actually access these settings, I'm pretty sure for everything. I'm gonna start with this image because there's a few basic settings I wanna to touch on at the start and then a few others later. So I've got my module settings, I can click on this cog and I go to advanced and down the bottom here, you'll see scroll effects. So we're going to the cog up to advanced at the top and then scroll effects down the bottom. And there's a few different things here. The first one I wanna to touch on is sticky position, which is perfect for this image. I can actually choose to have stick to top which means as I'm scrolling down the page and the image hits the top, it then continues to follow as I scroll down, as you can see on the right over there. I can also do the opposite by having stick to bottom. As I scroll up, the bottom of the image sticks to the viewport and then stays behind. So you got, it's a pretty cool and easy effect and you can even add stick to top and bottom if you decide you really want to make full use of that stickiness feature. Now there's a few options that come along with the stickiness. We're going to stick to stick to top and you'll see there's an offset. If I scroll down, maybe there's something at the top I don't want to cover. I can give it an offset, which makes it stay no further than that. So I come down and then it stops and we get this, this offset space here. So that's actually pretty cool. The other thing too is with the bottom sticky limit, we can also add uh, certain limitations. I can actually have it go no further than the actual section, which is this green area here. So as I come down and it follows us, it will stop at the section and go no further. So we have controls to limit how far it goes. And we can even set the full body area if you want to. So we just keep going and then it stops at the footer. So that's actually a pretty handy thing. It can be the, the column, the row, you, you sort of get the idea. And there's a few other little elements here like offset from surrounding sticky elements. So if you have other sticky elements on the page, they're going to collide with, they're going to sort of not overlap too much. And you can also transition and have transition styles. But that is pretty much the first one is that sticky position up the top. So we're going to leave that there just for a bit of fun. Although I'm going to go back in for one second and make the sticky limit the section. So where I'm actually gonna go next is this little call to action I have down here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up this full section, not this actual section section here, but this row here within the section by clicking on the cog symbol. Going to advance and going to scroll effects. And we're gonna explore some of these effects right here so you can see how they look. Now we've already looked at the sticky position, but here we have different uh, motion effects, horizontal, vertical, or vertical, horizontal, fading it in and out, that sort of thing. And what happens is we have a motion trigger. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just have enable vertical motion. So you see, as I come down the page, it moves up and goes up and beyond, which is what we saw before with that other element. But with all of these, you do get some settings. You can actually choose a midpoint and how far you want it to go. So if I say the viewport bottom, I want this to be 10, which is pretty crazy and this one to be say negative two at the top, I then get a very dramatic increase up and then it slows down at the top because this bit at the bottom where it shoots up is much more, much, much higher setting and this is much lower, which means you can also do negative one and one to have a more subtle effect. As I scroll, it just moves slightly. It doesn't have to be an extreme effect. It can be nice and slight. So it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can make it slight. You can make it highly intense. You can make it, you can really, if you want, really want to test the limits, I've never really tried going at, at anything like this, but if I had 20 and 20, you can see things get pretty, pretty insane. And also that's the thing too. If I don't put negative there, it actually goes down. So if I hit negative, that will now change. 
and the position changes with it. So you can also flip these. I can go four and negative three. So as I scroll down, it actually comes down the page, but it's not really a desirable effect. So we're just gonna reset that. And of course you can also hover on, on mobile and change these settings if you don't want it or want it to be different for a mobile. And then of course you have the same thing with horizontal motion. I can enable that. So as we go up and down, at the moment I have both vertical and horizontal. So we've got this diagonal line. So if I go back to vertical and turn that off, we'll only have horizontal motion. And again, we've got less settings with this because it's a bit, uh, sorry, same settings. We can even choose the midpoint if we want to. So the mid offset would be over here. So we get a different effect altogether. Reset again. So that's pretty great, pretty straightforward. Now the next one is fading in and out. First of all, I'm going to disable horizontal, go to fading and enable that. The way that works is at the bottom of the viewport, it is 0%. As we keep scrolling, it just stays at 100%. So the idea is, as I come here, it's transparent and then it fades in and then stays. If I want it to fade out on the way out, I can put 0% at the end here. And then as I come in, it fades in and appears and then fades out. So you got a bit of, you get the idea of how that works. Now I can also just change those. I can make it, if you want to do something completely weird, you could have 100% and then 10% and 100% or, and then you can try and do things that way. So that way you get this full and then nothing and then on again. So you see you have complete control and you can change where in the viewport things pop up. So maybe it's here, goes transparent, comes back a bit. You get, you have a lot of fun playing with these effects. You turn that one off. And we're gonna go to scaling up and down. And then we'll touch on the motion trigger effect at the end, because it's pretty minor detail, but I feel it's best uh, sort of shown through the blur. Now, if I enable scaling up and down, you can see how the size changes. At the moment, it scales from 70% up to 100%. But what I can do, I can make this 1%, and then you get a very extreme effect as it appears quite dramatically. And then you probably even add a little extra to it by making it 120 at the end, so it sort of appears quite dramatically and then slows down and keeps going. You can really take it to the, to the next level, make it 300%, and then get something completely ridiculous as it blows right up as you're scrolling. So there's actually not really that much of a limit. You can pretty much do what you want with it. And again, rotating, same thing. If I actually, I can combine these effects like I was saying before, so I can rotate. So as I come in, it rotates into action and it stays there. So that's a pretty nifty effect when you combine it with scaling. And then of course, if you just want to turn the scaling off, you can just have it rotate. Now the other thing too is I'm going to turn off the rotation and go to blur. Enable blur. Now you'll see how the image blurs. It's blurred here until I scroll down on the page. And you'll see here is the starting blur is 10 pixels in. I can move these handles in nice and tight like this. And then what happens is we get this really deep blur and then suddenly it comes good and goes away. And of course the ending blur, I can add say a 50 pixel blur at the end so it's completely blurred out. As we scroll, it appears and then suddenly blurs right out. So once again, let's make some adjustments. And you can see just how nifty these effects really are. But what I really want to touch on is you'll see here it's blurry and then as I get past the middle that's when it comes sort of comes good because it's actually using the middle of the element. If I change this to top of the element then the blur comes into action as we cross over the top of it and therefore activates much sooner. So you can see if I change here to middle it goes back to being blurry because it has to pass over the center, the vertical center of the element before it activates even more so from the bottom. So as I'm scrolling, it stays blurry until I get right past and then it comes good. So that's what the trigger effect is. Just to give you a minor, a sort of a minor detail on that is when the trigger is actually activated. Middle would be good in most cases, but if you feel like it's not coming on soon enough and you can't quite get the adjustments up here correct, 
you can play with that motion trigger effect to get it the way you want. Now, as I said before, we can also play with these. We can enable the rotation. We can enable the scaling, and we can even enable, say, horizontal motion and get a really crazy effect. So as we come in here, it slides on screen and goes bam, and then fades out. So that's pretty cool. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna tick and we're gonna actually save this and just gonna look at this publicly to see how it looks. Okay, so we're on the public page now. We're outside of the editor. I'm gonna scroll down. We have our initial bit there, which is now turned off. Our sticky element, and then our scroll effect with our call to action. So that is pretty much it. You can see it's pretty much down to your imagination um, I've also had some hover effects on there, so just ignore those from another video. But uh, you can see how it works. It's a pretty powerful uh, tool to create some pretty nifty effects. Great for call to actions if you want to catch people's attention. Um, however, I would say in most circles, probably best if not overdone. It's, pro it's a great effect you can have fun with. Awesome if it's subtle. If your website calls for some great animation, that's great. But in most professional settings, you're probably not going to want to go too far with this but have a bit of fun with it, have a play, and uh, leave a comment below and let me know how you go. Otherwise, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Also, if you don't have the Divi theme, consider downloading it. I have a link on the screen right now, which is an affiliate link, which means I make a commission if you decide to buy, but I've personally been using this theme for years and built over 100 websites with it, and it is absolutely fantastic. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.